You still upset about that letter from Herman, shit? Yeah, it's made me all depressed. Like with issues around self-esteem issues. You know. Go on, read it to me, blood. Here it goes. All right, Biffy Wappen. Classic opening. Yes. Listen, I met this geezer, yeah, and he's from America or something, yeah. And he's a GI or some shit like that. And he, like, buys me stuff and gives me chewing gum and all this. And this is him to me, I love you. And then this is me to him, I love you too. And then I let him touch me up behind the tooting Granada. Really sorry. Ah, that's shit, man. That's a bad letter to get. Yeah. Especially from your dad. You know what I'm saying? Mum is so gonna kill him. When I bang my clipboard on the dash like so, I'd like you to imagine someone stepped in front of the car and execute an emergency stop, retaining full control of the vehicle. Okay. Would you please pull away when it is safe to do so? I'm afraid today we have to start with an apology. You may have already heard in the news about something which happened to us last week. After Thursday's show, we went to a special cafe near the studio called The Coach and Horses. <laughs> As you know, we're always having competitions. Well, we had a competition to drink all the drinks hanging on the wall from left to right. The drinks made us act in a silly way. <laughs> the music was very fast and loud, and Tina pulled her jumper up over her head to do a dance to it. And then we had to take Jason home because he was poorly on the carpet and some chairs. <laughs> on the walk back, one of us went to the toilet in someone's letterbox. <laughs> and an amount of Tina's underwear was left on the wing mirror of a car where it was found the next morning. Alistair was kind and took me into a quiet street behind some shops to try to help sort out the model with my clothes. But some people from a newspaper thought they saw me wrestling Tina in a special way. <laughs> They took some pictures of this because they believed you'd be interested in seeing it. While I was explaining to the man with the camera that he'd made a mistake and we weren't wrestling, I accidentally bit him on the nose. <laughs> Quite hard. <laughs> and I now realise this was wrong. Yes, it was. So today, we'd like to say that we're sorry. Alistair, you've been to Telford to see a Vulcan bomber. Mm. I have. <laughs> My name is Dr. Tia. I live in Botswana, saving lives. Do you? <laughs> Medical genius? No. Miracle worker? Sometimes. Lunatic? Now we're getting close. <laughs> this primitive and crude medical center is my kingdom. The people here call me Mamafat. How to explain in a way you'll understand. In the bush, they believe in a legend. A legend that tells of a white devil who will one day be their salvation and their redeemer. They flatter me by calling me their Mamafat. <sighs> My name's Mark Pembridge and I'm an actor. Six months ago, I was acting in a dramatic reconstruction for one of those accident claims adverts. I was playing a chef who in real life burnt his hand on a hot stove when suddenly I burnt my elbow on a hot stove. Ow! Ah! I felt entitled to compensation. Luckily, I knew who to call. Have you suffered an accident while reconstructing an accident? <laughs> yes. Then you could be entitled to compensation. Call us now. I got £7,000, and in no time at all, I was back at work reconstructing accidents for accident claims adverts. Mark is not alone. Sarah Clacy sprained her wrist when she was reconstructing a woman tripping at work and twisting her knee. Ow. She got £3,000. Mike Lorimer called us when he fell from a stepladder and broke his leg, 
reconstructing a builder falling from a stepladder and breaking his leg. <laughs> he got £5,000. So if you've injured yourself whilst reconstructing someone falling downstairs or slipping on a wet floor, then call Reconstruction Claims Direct now. We're waiting for your... <laughs> Have you had an accident while presenting an accident claims advert for people who have had accidents reconstructing accidents? Then call Reconstruction Claims Direct Gold now on 08081 570 585. We're waiting for your call. <laughs> We're here amongst the priceless relics in the library de la Santa Croce in Pisa to see perhaps the most priceless of all. A book of legends and folk tales, handwritten by a former dandy, born Francesco Bernardone, better known to us simply as St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis died at 43. His body, brother donkey, as he called it, broken by the many years of austere living he'd chosen. But he left us this, the Fioretti. The little flowers. And after nearly 800 years, it's still possible to hold in one's hand the original precious manuscript whose value is absolutely beyond measure. <laughs> Now, you may have already heard in the news about something which happened to us recently. While we were on our summer expedition to Madagascar, it turned out that Jason's fiancée had become very good friends with a Derby County footballer. <laughs> we wanted to cheer Jason up, so we took him to a special dancing club to watch some dancing. <laughs> we hadn't realised how special the dancing club actually was. <laughs> There was a rule in force that we weren't allowed to touch the dancers. But because of all the grown-up drinks we'd had, Jason forgot that rule. Jason forgot the rule a few times. And the big man had to hurt my fingers. <laughs> While this was happening, another of the dancers recognised me from the BBC World Channel, where I host a weekly programme about films. She took me to a special room at the back of the club to see if I could help her get a job in the media. <laughs> Alistair was giving her a lot of help, but while he was doing this, one of her friends came in and took some photographs. This man wanted me to pay him a lot of money for the photographs, and I thought this was unfair. I got cross, and while I was explaining to him how I felt, I accidentally bit him on the nose. <laughs> Quite hard. And I now realise that this was wrong. We'd like to say sorry to you, because when these mistakes happened, we let you down. Jason, you've been to Dundee to see a new museum all about cake. That's right. Yes, no. 
How's the old eyesight this evening, Fife? Much better, thank you. I have a new pair of spectacles at last. Fife has spent much of this week going to and from his ophthalmologist. That's an optician to you and me. Yes, I had terrible trouble seeing where I was going. I kept ending up in the catering suppliers next door. Yes, he's now nearly got enough glasses to host a wine and cheese evening. <laughs> <laughs> now, a few of you will know this, but Fife seldom wears his spectacles at home. An unnecessary extravagance. Indeed, although the uncharitable may say this has much to do with the Teutonic mean of Mrs. Fife. Ignorance is bliss, if you catch my meaning. Yes, sir. Uh, in the early years, she used to bleach her moustache. Indeed. Whereas now, she and I frequently get mistaken for one another at parties. <laughs> anyway, each to their own, as the saying has it. And that, funnily enough, is what this next song is all about. When it comes to affairs of the heart, there's no accounting for taste. Blonde or ginger, looker or minger, there none, none of them go to waste. Some men like the mysterious type, others prefer them chatty. And one man's glorious rubiness is another man's wanton fatty. That's a chocolate box selection, but don't delve in search of love. Cause there's an overlooked confection in the abandoned lair above. <laughs> I like women over 30, a bit thick around the middle and fuller in the bust. They are much more likely to be dirty and are pretty much do anything when overcome with lust. There's something to be said for the gamier kind of bird. They love a bit of stuffing and a spit roast's not unheard of. <laughs> so forget the young and tutored and the frankly immature and why not give their mom a call? <laughs> I like women over 60. I really shouldn't say it, but it's true. I often cop a feel when I'm out with meals on wheels, and afterwards I sh Face the front. <laughs> Hello. Now, you may be wondering why Jason isn't with us today. Well, you've probably already heard the unfortunate news about our last appeal. Yes, by collecting all those stamps and unwanted clothes, you raised nearly a million pounds towards a holiday centre for disabled people in the New Forest. Now, Jason came up with an idea for making even more money from the amount you'd already raised. He transferred that money into another bank account. <laughs> and spent it on a large amount of special powder. <laughs> this powder, like the Holiday Centre, is designed to make people feel very happy. Jason was going to sell this powder for nearly double what he'd spent on it. Thereby doubling your money. But some bad men stole the powder from its secret hiding place in our time capsule for the year 2025. <laughs> Things were really in a bit of a mess now, and what Jason should have done was spoken to some people in charge to see if everything could have been sorted out. Unfortunately, Jason tried to make things all right by himself. Yes. He attempted to get the powder back off the bad men, but there was a horrible incident with a chest freezer, Pippin, and some plastic bags. <laughs> Jason let us down, he let you down, but most of all, he let himself down. 
and Pippin. <laughs> yeah. Tina, you've been to Wigan to see the world's largest mirror. That's right. <laughs> I'm having such a great time. Me too. I feel like I've known you for ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, so tell me about yourself. Oh, well, I mean, there's not much to tell, really. You know, I'd rather hear about you. <laughs> hey, I know a good way to do this. Let's swap secrets. Uh-oh. This sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> but no wimping out, OK? They've got to be true, no matter how weird. OK, OK. <laughs> there goes, um, I eat banana and marmite sandwiches. Wow. That is a bit weird. <laughs> um, OK. I've got a Rick Astley CD. Um, my middle name's Tuesday. Oh, um, I, I like Morris dancing. OK, uh, <laughs> I run a Dale Winton fan club. I've turned my basement into a shrine to you. <laughs> what? <laughs> my basement's full of things about you, you know, just like stuff I've collected over the past few years. But we only met three weeks ago. Well, actually, you met me three weeks ago. I've known you much longer. <laughs> Just photos, mainly. Like, uh, you coming out of your house, going into your house, walking around the supermarket, that sort of thing. There's a bit of long-lens stuff of you in your kitchen. Oh, yeah, and there's this really good one of you in your bedroom. It was really funny, cos you had absolutely no idea I was in there. Not a clue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then there was that time that you were off sick, watching Quincy, and you got up cos you heard a noise, remember? That was me. I was in your utility room, going through your washing. You never found your jumper, did you? I've had it all the time. <laughs> A bit too weird. <laughs> Peter is standing on a stool and using his mother's chip pan. Stop! This is dangerous. Stools can be fragile. <laughs> Children should always stand on a solid chair when using a chip pan. <laughs> Remember, chip pan, children, chair. <laughs> Ship's journal, time quadrant Gamma 048. We have landed on Gamelion 4, the so-called pleasure planet, on a routine diplomatic mission. We have, however, been instructed to adhere to Foundation protocol as best we can. Welcome. Welcome to Gamelion 4. Please, avail yourselves of our hospitality. It is our way to give you everything you desire. Thank you. I... <laughs> Please, follow us. Benson, Benson. Oh. Come on. While you are staying with us, it is a Gamaleen custom that you are accompanied by a pleasure partner or doona of your choice. Thank you. Lieutenant, you may choose first. Captain, make your selection. <laughs> Our hospitality is pleasing to you? Most pleasing. <laughs> Ensign, the best to last. Is that not the custom of your people? That's what they say, Bowen. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm... Benson, <laughs> you are offending our hosts. And now we play with toys. Toys? These are not like your earthly toys, Captain. These toys are the pinnacle of our pleasure-making technology. This device, when grasped in your hands, creates a sensation within you of the most intense delight you have ever known. Your doona will guide you in its use. Please, enjoy. <laughs> We are a little short this week. Yeah, big surprise. <laughs> Do not mourn. There is an alternative. You like skipping? <laughs> and now, to the most wonderful part of our pleasure. You will all retire with your dunas to the bedchambers. There they will use their shape-shifting powers and reveal their true selves to you. 
You will spend the night in a state of unparalleled euphoria, unknown to any of your kind. I've got to go. What? We've got to go back now. Why? Well, yes? It's a trap, sir. Don't be ridiculous. The, 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 the... They're, they're going to eat us. You will carry out your orders, Edson, as we will carry out ours. But if I'm not getting any, nobody is. Edson! <laughs> Mayday! Mayday! Beam us up now. Request immediate recall. What is the matter? Does our hospitality displease you? Edson! Benson! Beam us up! Beam us up now! Edson! Benson! <laughs> Don't go, Edson Benson. Hang on. <laughs> Face the front. <laughs> you rang, Mr. Stuffer? Ah, the very fellow. Once again, I find myself in need of your assistance, Veal. I fear I've got into a frightful chutney with a girl called Mary Gardner. She's a scullery maid of Lord Dartmouth's, is she not, sir? Quite so, Veal. Then I believe I can guess the nature of your difficulty. Good heavens, can you? Your Aunt Hilda instructed you to poach Miss Gardner for her own household staff, and in the process you've incurred the wrath of Lady Dartmouth, and thus jeopardised the impending nuptials of Lord and Lady Dartmouth's daughter to your cousin Horace. No, I shot her senseless in the pantry a few weeks ago. <laughs> now the stupid bitch is pregnant. And what's worse, the Skaggy Hall refuses to have an abortion. The bally cheek of it, Bill. Right. Oh, I feel a proper potato neck, I don't mind telling you. So have a killed. There's a good chap. Perhaps if Sir were to disguise himself as an Abyssinian. No. Just have her killed. Certainly, sir. Oh, and while you're out, a spot of heroin wouldn't go amiss. <laughs> Very good, sir. Bucks <laughs> Fizz still aren't talking. Shame. Nobody knows when Parmesan's gone off. Gotcha. Somebody get me an ice cream. I've been looking into sexuality. What have you discovered? It's a broad church. Good work. Elephants can cry. Right. Grey squirrels are delicious. OK. Everyone gets ill at Christmas. I've noticed that. Canadians don't lock their front doors. OK. Your sperm counts in. What is it? Above average. You beauty. Your job at the teacher's just died. Damn. I don't know who I am anymore. Well done, Susan. Where the hell's my ice cream? I wanted a bloody cone, Declan. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit like a moony wedding, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> it feels like Scylla might be about to jump out. Oh, God. <laughs> but apart from that, is everything OK? Are you mad? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm in paradise and I'm married to the most amazing woman in the world. <laughs> Hello, ha. <Hello>, Hello. <laughs> Here, I'll take that. I'll pay for it. <laughs> Hello, ha. Hello, ha. Here, ladies. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. What am I talking about? She rang off with the wedding DJ. Of course she doesn't love me. <laughs> hey, don't you worry about me. I'm here to make the best of things. Nothing lasts forever. Now, the Emmerdale omnibus often feels like it. Eh? But um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be lost on you, that one. I'll take a seat, shall I? <laughs> Aloha. 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 Oh. Hello, Jim Talon. Oh, hi, Phil Kane. This is Sally. Sally Kane. 
Oh, honeymoon is too. Congratulations. <laughs> It's just perfect here, isn't it? Aloha. Oh, aloha. aloha. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> you just married too. Yes. No. Where's your good lady wife? I've no idea. <laughs> She's still getting ready. You'll have to get used to that, Jim. Actually, Sally, I won't, because uh, straight after the wedding, we decided we weren't compatible. Well, actually, she decided that I wasn't compatible and that Matt Dugdale of Soul Inferno Disco, Maybrook Industrial Estate, Walsall, <laughs> West Midlands, WS4 7GY was. <laughs> Still never mind. Say la vie, as they say in Rome. <laughs> Bloody hell, Joe. Aren't you joking, aren't you? I wasn't joking, I know. It's French. <laughs> so you've come on the honeymoon special? Without a honey. That's right. But it's fine. You know, because I'm, I'm quite a positive chap. You know, glass half full and all that. Mind you, I don't touch alcohol. You know, I, I get a bit funny when I've had a drink. Not funny, ha ha, more funny, not funny. You know. <laughs> Sort of take things the wrong way and go a bit spare. Like setting fire to the wedding marquee and hurling 68 fillets of chicken supreme at the guests in front of me mother-in-law's disapproving fat face! <laughs> Funny like that. God, Jim, I, I don't know what to say. I, I think you're incredibly... Brave. Yeah, yeah. incredibly brave. Um, well, God, I, I hope you still enjoy your holiday. <laughs> yeah, we'd better order. Um, any idea what you're going to have yet, darling? Give us a chance. I haven't looked at the menu yet. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking, Phil. His face, honestly. <laughs> you got to laugh, haven't you? Else you'll cry. I guess. You'll cry. Why in the name of sanity didn't you mention you had doubts before I spent 18 grand on the ceremony, you mad bitch? <laughs> you'll cry. <laughs> Only joking. She's a terrific woman, really. Just a bit flighty. Oh, no, not for me. Thanks. No. Oh, sod it. Go on, then. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> Here. Mm. I look like Mr T at the Mardi Gras with these on, don't you reckon? <laughs> I ain't getting on no plane, fool. <laughs> yeah, go on, Phil. Laugh it up. She's going to let me down a bit more gently than that, you shit house. <laughs> I should look on the bright side, really, you know. There she is in a bed sit in Walsall with Matt Dugdale. And I'm here in paradise with me two new best friends. Yeah. <laughs> on our honeymoon. <laughs> Can I have some more paper, please? Miss Jennings? 